Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be working on the Briggs again, and, uh, and more specifically the Briggs engine. Um, I don't know if you remember, if you've been following along uh, throughout the course of this build series, uh, you'll know that uh, the engine that is currently on the Briggs has no spark, and that's because it's kind of a conglomeration from a few different Briggs and Stratton models. Uh, long story short, the crankshaft is out of a newer go-kart style engine that has electronic ignition and the rest of the engine uh, is from a older points based system that was off of a rototiller. Uh, so long story short, I don't have the little cam indentations on the crankshaft uh, that uh, make the breaker points open and close, so it has no spark. So today we are going to upgrade that to electronic ignition and uh, also, uh, while I'm in there, if it fits, I'm going to upgrade to an aluminum flywheel. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, so uh, here's our newer style electronic ignition. I pulled this off of a uh, 625E quad something series push mower. It's the five horse equivalent in a vertical shaft. So I pulled that off. That is a swappable part number, so that should fit. Watch out because there are a lot of them on eBay that say they fit that have the wrong spacing for these two holes. So that's OEM Briggs. That should work well and will bypass the points. And then here's the flywheel from that same push mower. Now I'm hoping since they're both five horse that this will fit because this is a lot lighter than that cast iron flywheel that is currently on there from the 1980s or 70s whichever it is uh, rototiller engine so uh, yeah we'll give it a shot but uh, first thing that's got to happen got to pull off this engine cover alright I got the cover off and you can see here we have that cast iron old school style flywheel and uh, yeah he'll also notice a bolt instead of a nut. Now that's because I was trying to spin this over with an impact and stripped out the threads that uh, the nut go on on the crankshaft. So uh, keep that in mind. If you see people online using drills and impacts and stuff to turn engines, it's not always without its risks. Uh, but it's secure now with the bolt. It was just a lot of fabrication work that wasn't necessary. Um, but I'm going to go ahead, pull that bolt, and then I'll get a puller on this flywheel and take it off so you guys can see the points. Alright, so we have our, uh, wow, pretty hefty cast iron flywheel off. Now, uh, time to go ahead and uh, pull this cover and get our condenser and points out of the way. All right, and there is our condenser, and there's our points. This is all still functional. It just doesn't have the proper indentations in the crankshaft. What happens is there's a little, uh, uh, I guess you call it a plunger, that goes down here, and then it rides inside of here on the crankshaft. And uh, when those indentations, or more accurately, that one indentation goes around, uh, this will go down and up, down and up, but right now, it's just stuck in one position because of the wrong crankshaft. But I just thought I'd show you guys that before I pull this off. Okay, I got the scale set to ounces here. Get the magnet side up so that, uh, get that crap off, so that doesn't throw off our scale at all. Oh, I guess we're going to use pounds. Okay. So that's just over six pounds. That's a whole lot of flywheel for what's essentially a motorcycle. All right, let's try our aluminum one that's from the mower. Wow, 1.9 pounds. So over three times lighter. That's losing four pounds. That's really good for the bike overall to lose that much weight, especially as a rotating mass. That's awesome. And then uh, just to show you guys, uh, 
make sure that they actually are the same. And uh, yes, they indeed are the same diameter. Awesome. All right, so now you know. Throw away mowers, have some decent flywheels to upgrade your Briggs for your bike. So I'm going to go ahead and get this bolted back on the engine. Okay, and uh, as a nice little added bonus, I don't know if you guys can see this here, but uh, this flywheel gave me just enough threads for the original nut to grab on the crankshaft. So, I mean, I'm still going to put that bolt on uh, just to make sure. But, uh, yeah, that's awesome to have this more secure and with the original hardware again. Uh, this must just be, you know, like eighth of an inch or so, maybe three sixteenths, a little shallower where the nut goes. And that, that little bit made a big difference. Awesome. Okay, so uh, got the coil on, got the flywheel on. It would appear as though flywheel is not indeed the exact same size. Okay, so bit of an update here. It was not the flywheel that was different. It was the ignition coil. This one is gapped perfectly fine. However, I still need to use this new ignition coil uh, in order to solve my no spark issue. So I'm going to have to modify that to fit or I'm going to have to get one that's meant for a horizontal shaft engine and install it on here. All right, just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update. It did not work. Ooh. Damn, that's hot. Okay, well, anyway, there was a piece, which is now down there somewhere. Right there. Yeah. That fell off from the vibrations, and then this side got kind of bent up in the vise. It's just... It was a good idea, but... Uh, Sometimes good ideas don't work out, so that's trash now, and uh, I'm going to buy a correct ignition coil for this, which is the same size as that one, but electronic, and uh, I'll get back to you guys once I have it. Alright, so we got our uh, new ignition coil in, the electronic one. You can see the spacing. Uh, from the tip to the bolt hole lines up on this one. I actually went and measured this and then asked like six different eBay sellers to measure to make sure it was correct, and it is. Um, and then it did not come with a kill wire, so I swapped this and then the boot uh, from the lawnmower ignition coil. So yeah, this is pretty much ready to install and uh, to put on the motor. Uh, but before I do this... Um, if anyone wants this old um, condenser and ignition coil and this cover and breaker points and spring and that all that old stuff, um, I'm going to put this up on an auction uh, on eBay and that's a way that you guys can support the channel if you want to, uh, if you need these parts. If not, don't worry about it. It's, I'm just going to start it at 99 cents and uh, if you want it, bid on it. Um, and then I think I'm going to put this cast iron flywheel on there too. Uh, I think I might have another one of those laying around as well. Because otherwise these are just trash. And uh, yeah, if someone can make use of them, uh, that'd be great. So I'm going to throw those up on eBay for you guys. But uh, for now, let's go ahead and uh, get this new ignition coil on. Okay, so I got the new ignition coil on there with our little... Uh air deflector that cools the head. However, um, as you'll see here, we still have a pretty large gap. It might make some spark, but uh, that's at the furthest adjustment down. So I'm still going to have to trim this a little bit. I'm just going to have to be more careful than last time because uh, we're not down to the, the ten thousandths, or with this one it might be more like twenty. But yeah, we're not down to to gap spec yet, so I'm going to modify this and try not to break it. At least this time we only have a little bit of a way to go instead of like a quarter of an inch. So stay tuned. All right, I've removed quite a bit of material there. Let's see how we did. 
All right, it worked. It is sitting correct. It is the correct level this way. We have the right gap. I didn't have my feeler gauges on me, but uh, that's that's pretty close to 10,000. So these are just razor blade guards. They call it matchbook thickness. That's another way of checking on these old engines. But uh, yeah, we have our gap now. All right, this is looking pretty good. I got the spark plug wire routed correctly. It came off a little bit at a different angle uh, than the original uh, ignition coil, but it still fit. I didn't have to modify the cover. It's a little long, but I'm okay with it. Um, so I'm just going to put a spark plug tester in line here and uh, see if we got spark on the new coil. Okay, I got the lights at a minimum here, so uh, hopefully you guys will be able to see the spark on the test light. Oh, nice. Oh! <laughs> oh, and that's the joys of... Uh... <laughs> not having a kickstand. I'll have to get one eventually. But the spark worked! It worked really well! That's awesome! Alright guys, thanks for watching. As you can see, we got the uh, bike turned back around to where uh, it won't try to fall down all the time. It's more stable here, which is awesome. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we have spark again, which is a huge thing. The engine technically is like ready to run. I mean, aside from adding a fuel system, which will come later, uh, it's pretty much there, which is awesome. Um, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, uh, make sure to subscribe. And then uh, also, I'm going to uh, put the link in the description for those eBay listings. Uh, these will benefit me and the channel uh, if you wanted to buy them. Uh, and if not, no worries at all. Um, it's just there if you guys need them. Um, otherwise, I will see you guys next time, and thanks for watching.